Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in James chapter 5, verse 10, as well as Hosea chapter 2, verse 5. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word, Lord Jesus. Bless us as we study your word, as we dig into your word, as we try to keep your word, God, hidden in our heart that we might not sin against you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, James chapter 5, verse 10. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Okay, and today that is completed with Hosea chapter 2, verse 5. For their mothers had, for their mother has played the whore. She who conceived them has acted shamefully. And for she said, I will go after my lovers who give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. All right. And so, um, of course, we've had uh, James chapter five, verse 10 before. And it's uh, it's the example that the Lord consistently gives us to help us remember that, you know, what we're going through, it, it may be tough right? But at least it's not like the prophets of old, right? At least um, it's it's not as bad as it could get, right? And um, it, it when we go back and we read the Old Testament and we see the, the different things that the prophets had to go through, it's an encouragement to us, right? Because if they can stand in the face of persecution, trial, um, embarrassment, like sheer embarrassment in its worst forms, you know, as we read Hosea, right? You know, it, it, if they can go through this, then we can go through that, right? Or if they can go through that, we can go through this, however you want to put it. All right. And so it that's what James chapter five is letting us know is that we can take from these examples how to suffer long, how to be patient, right? How to, um, because I mean, when you're reading these things, don't just gloss over them, you know, sit and meditate on the feelings of the author, right? Sit and meditate on the the thing that they might have been thinking. Put yourself into the context of the person, read the previous chapter, read the, the chapter that you're in, read the next chapter, you know, study the character of many of these prophets and you'll begin to see that, wow, this had to be tough, right? Like, I mean, just so much going on for this specific one, for your Hosea, um, he gave us Hosea chapter two, verse five, it says, for their mother has played the whore she who conceived them has acted shamefully. And so remember, Hosea was told to go take, um, basically a a wife who, who played the whore, who was, uh, acted as if she was like a prostitute, right? Her name was Gomer, I think. And so he, he went among the uh, specific person. He got the wife that, um, he was going to get, and that he knew was like that, you know, that God had told him that, you know, the children of Israel are this way. They act as the whore, right? They play the whore. Whenever you see that in the Bible, it means that the children of Israel are unfaithful um, and they are not, um, they are going around from God to God, right? They are just like the world. They're not like what God is telling them to be like. They're not setting themselves apart, right? And so because they are co-mingling so much with the world and worshiping their gods and eating their foods that they offer to idols and worshiping in high places and doing all sorts of things with the Asherahs, the Baals, all these things. And, and God is saying, it's like, there, it's not like it, they are playing the whore, the children of Israel. And so, um, they're acting very shamefully. And so God is speaking to his prophet and he has to go through this thing. Right. And so this is a great example of patience and suffering, right? An example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. So Hosea, 
was a great example of suffering and patience, right? It says, for their mother has played the horse. She has conceived them. And she who conceived them has acted shamefully. So when she conceived their children, right? And he went to go name them. You have to understand, you know, Jewish customs were already very strict, right? So there, it wasn't just a custom of, you know, oh, you can't touch the wife if she has a baby and she's unclean. No, like it, it was all the name of the child had to be given on a certain day, the, the cleansing and the, this and the, that so many rules, so many regulations and stipulations. And yet, you know, this man of God who was amongst a people who were supposed to be a people of God and they had lots of rules, right? But they were doing whatever they wanted to do. And he was a man who feared God, right? And he is this man who feared God, who had taken a wife who was acting this way and had even conceived a child, you know, um, that was not his right and and then another and uh, and 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 to the point where he didn't know who you know who was the father of these children and so well we don't know we know one of them he named uh, not mine basically I think something like that but um so she she would go around from these places and she'd sell herself very cheaply too it wasn't just that she was doing this she would do it just so cheaply and and that is how the children of Israel were um seen as being doing right because they they had the real true and living God it wasn't like their God was just another type of God they actually served and then they knew they served the one true God, right? And that is how he, you know, he was the great I am. That's how he identified himself, right, to them. That he he showed them so many miracles. He caused them to to do so many things and and yet they treated him cheaply, right? Because they would get all these other different gods when he clearly would state have no other gods, right? Don't do that. Don't don't put no God before me. Put nothing before. Don't worship other gods. Like he made it very clear to them. And yet they still just sold themselves cheaply, right? It says she who conceived them has acted shamefully. Um, It says, for she said, I will go after my lovers. So it wasn't like the men were throwing themselves at her. And so in the same way with Israel, the the gods weren't coming after the children of Israel, right? Yeah, I mean, if you look at Moab, yeah, like they were looking at um, them and it enticed them to to act like Moab and, and worship other gods. But this specific case, you know, it, nobody was forcing gods on Israel right? It says, for she said, I will go after my lovers who give me bread and who give me my bread and my water. Wow. So bread and water, right? You know, like it wasn't like she was getting anything super fine. This is my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink, right? So it she she was she was going out there and putting herself out there in such a horrible shameful way amongst a holy man right being the wife of a holy man and and yet she just treated him and their family this way no shame to her children right at one point he says in Hosea chapter 2 the beginning you know plead with your mother right plead with her and that is like a, an analogy of, of of begging the children of Israel to see God right see God's face right and so Hosea had to have had some patience right I mean he had to be in it to win it for Jesus because uh, you know we know that adultery is a a, a a actual you know stipulation for um divorce And so he chose to stay with her, right? He chose to to sit here as she was having these babies and not leave her. 
and and he he did it because what god told him to right god had told him to marry her in the first place right god was the one who was directing his path god was the one who had planted the seed god was the one who was maintaining him in the process god can work all things together for our good even things that look absolutely horrible right? God is the one who is in charge. He is the one who is in control. He is the one who sees your fate and he knows exactly what he wants you to do and the character he wants to build in you. He he knows the greater purpose that he has for you going through what you go through. He knows that, you know, it, it may be a struggle right now, every moment, every second, but he knows you. He knows how strong you are, how well he made you, right? He knows that you're a fighter. He knows that he knows that you have something in you and he's trying to pull and wrestle that thing out of you. Even if you are holding on tight to it and you don't want to let it go because you you feel like, oh, I can't take this. I can't live like this, right? God sees your circumstance. He sees the patience that is being bred in you. He sees that patience is having her perfect work in you. He sees that you're bridling your tongue, even in the midst of a trial, when you could call this whoredom out, right? This, 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 all of this that um, Hosea was going through, he could have called her out in the streets and thrown her out naked, right? And yet he chose not to. Why? Because he knew that his life was a living testimony. He knew that the things that he did were for the Lord, right? They were, they were circumstances that were for all the people right and he knew that he had to do the will of the father over everything over opinion over the other prophets looking at him like oh my goodness this is disgusting this man you know that child's hair is this color and he don't have nobody in his family with that you know they had to be calling him out right and and making it like i saw her come out of such and such house and da, 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 da. he had to be patient in his trial right imagine going and telling somebody well the lord told me to such and such and such and do this and and be about this right you know how people would look at you like you need to get put into an insane asylum right but he didn't he just went through the thing, right? And he called out Israel as Israel was was the one, right? And and so he's sitting up telling the people and set, talking about Israel and talking and, and preaching about Israel and her whoredom and his wife is at home doing all of this, not at home, oh, at somebody else's house. Right. And so how many people are probably going around like, is he really saying these things right about us? And yet look at him and his wife. Right. So God had to see this thing and see it through with his child. He had to hold Hosea's hand right? Has God ever had to hold your hand through a season where you know you're, you have not done anything wrong. You are right. And, and yet you are just being drugged through the mud, right? Because God called you to be in this position. God called you to be in the mud this season, right? It it had to be some patience and some suffering going on. But remember, if you suffer, right, for a little while, it's gonna it's gonna come to pass right it's not gonna be always and and if you suffer with him then you will reign with him right suffer for Christ carry your cross right these are things that you don't you ain't gonna hear in a lot of sermons nowadays we talking about benzes and 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 living your best life right but right now God is saying take up your cross and follow me right following Christ is not always glamorous following Christ is not always shiny and pretty in the newest car right sometimes following Christ can get nasty right he had to 
go home with this woman every night and lay in the bed with her, right? That was some risky business, right? That was scary for him. And yet he went through it with patience and long suffering. He was acting in that case like God acts with us, right? Having to go home with you, yuck, right? <laughs> and having to be with you and, and you're just acting a fool and doing whatever you want to do. And I'll repent, I'm sorry, and, and trying to come home and, and do whatever, right? No, no. God doesn't give up on us. He loves us. He doesn't just divorce us. He keeps his arm around us. He still loves on us. He calls us out and then he loves on us. And he, and it doesn't matter how many people, you know, are, are talking about you and, and calling it every name. He still loves on us. Go through that thing. Go through that thing. If Hosea can go through that thing, you can go through that thing. Remember Hosea. God is telling us, remember Hosea, right? If Hosea can go through that, you can go through this, right? If Hosea can go through that, you can deal with that teenager. If Hosea can go through that, you can deal with this, this situation, right? Because God is letting us know that they had patience so you can have patience right? They have a testimony so you can overcome, right? And when you have a testimony, you go and tell other people too. That way they can overcome. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Father God, that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory for every good thing that comes in our life, Lord God. Give us a spark of hope by reading about the apostles and prophets. Give us patience, God. Give us long suffering, God. As we read your word, let us realize how faithful and just you truly are, God. Jesus, Lord God, help us to hang on until our change comes, God. Help us to hang on to your hand in the midst of this situation, God. Putting one foot in front front of the other every day no matter how bad it looks every day lord god you cause one foot to go in front of the other and we give you glory we give you thanks we give you praise i say thank you god one foot if you could do it for hosea one foot foot in front of the other to deal with our life circumstances, to deal with these afflictions, to deal with these trials, God. Help us to put one foot in front of the other every day, God. Putting our hope and our trust in you, Jesus. We give you glory, Father. We give you praise. We Thank you, Jesus. If you did it for Hosea, you can do it for us. We look to them as examples of patience, as examples of suffering, God. Lord Jesus, help us to continue to speak your name. Help us to continue to do your will, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Jesus, for doing this. Forgive me for all of my sins. In your name, I pray, Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you now to lead you and guide you into all truth. He is not forceful. He is light. He is gentle. And he's He's only going to go where you allow him to go. Let him into every part of your heart. Let him lead you and guide you down paths you never could have imagined. Your life will be so much greater if you give him a chance. He's going to lead you to a church home, 
a place where you can go and find other believers and stay sharp in the word of God, a place where you can go and be baptized in Jesus name, in the name of the father, the son, and the Holy spirit in the name of Jesus. And then also he's going to show you how to make disciples of all men, go out, tell others about Christ. These are things that he told us not to forsake. So go out, do those things, let the Holy spirit lead and guide you. He will never lead you wrong. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children, his peace. Take care.